Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with you today. It's a Monday video for Theo Trade on October 2nd, 2023. And what a wild day. As the market was up, it was down and it finished on. Just so you look over your SPY as a proxy, down 0.03% on the session. Uh, futures now at 0.02%. What a wild day, only to just go nowhere or finish unchanged on the session. And so it just brings up the thought, well, what's next for the market? I mean, bonds blowing out. I mean, utilities down 4%. You know, stocks like Nextera Energy uh, down over 10% at one time today. We're talking about a dividend-paying stock that is yielding now uh, 3.5%. That's a big deal. Uh, it, it's yields up over 1%, just like in the last little over a month. So uh, what are the opportunities right now? So that's what we're going to talk about today as we peruse the various markets and make some conclusions about what's next. Anytime I look at the S&P 500, it comes down to extremes, right? Um, extremes in price and extremes in, in volatility. As you look at the VIX today, uh, finished basically, again, unchanged on the session. We recently spiked up close to 20 before backing off late last week and then rallying a little bit on Friday and up a little bit today before falling back. Um, the question being, was this enough? Was this a big enough spike in the VIX to really suggest that, you know what? Hey, we, we've seen the capitulation of the market. We've seen the lows, and we're likely to move higher from here. Well, certainly last, last week when we reached the highs on, uh, <clears throat> on Wednesday, uh, it didn't, right? I mean, if we look at SPY, you know, since that point in time, um, again, on Wednesday, where are you? This is Monday. Wednesday's right here. You know, we ran up. We're finished. We're about the same level we were last week. And we're, at least intraday today, lower than we were last Wednesday on the 27th. But as we look at the VIX, we're looking at it from the perspective of the term structure, VIX, 3M plus VIX. What we want to see here is that has the ratio or the, or the relative strength of the three-month to one-month VIX, has the one-month VIX ri ro risen above the three-month VIX? And the answer is no. We're currently at about 1.05. We've never gotten down below one again. All right, great. So we, we're not quite there. We're close in terms of the term structure of volatility. And in fact, you can see that if you go to the product depth chart here, just look at uh, Nov and Dees. Uh, that's about 18.25, 18.3. And the current VIX right now, the current VIX is 17.6. So a little bit move, a little bit of a move lower in the market could cause the VIX to rise relative to the three-month volatility range or rise relative to the futures. And we could see uh, short-term yields or, or the, 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 the VIX um, rise above the VIX futures, which is a bullish indication. And as we look at the term structure right now, uh, the NOV and DS expirations, we're talking it's relatively flat right now. We're not exactly in backwardation. We're not like this, but we're fairly flat. So is it possible, as we're looking at the volatility markets, is it possible that we're near a low right now? And the answer is, of course, yes, we are, right? It is possible that we could be near a low in the market. Now, has the, the general risk around the market subsided? Well, for that, we look at SKU. Well, unfortunately, this hasn't updated yet today, but it will here probably in about 20, 30 minutes. But, uh, but if we look at where SKU went on Friday of last week, it ticked up to 134. And this is the one thing that's not coming down right now. Um, as we're trying to figure out where's <clears throat> where's inflation going, what's the, <clears throat> the Fed going to do? We're at a point right now where SKU has remained relatively high. And this is kind of a big deal, right? What it means is that institutions are relatively hedged and continue to maintain those hedges. Normally, when you sell off, SKU comes down. If we can get down and hear that 115 to 120 area, like we were going into the start of the year, that's kind of a market clearing level where we sold, we, we pulled those hedges, we bought puts instead, the VIX went up. And what we're seeing is with the rise in the VIX, we've yet to see the skew come down, which is normal to see. Unfortunately, it's remained up, which basically suggests there's still significant risks to the downside. So what was we kind of bring this together and we look at the ES futures or SPX, whatever you want to look at right now, it is possible that we're near a short-term bottom. And what does that mean? Or what does that a short-term bottom look like? Well, if I draw a fib retracement from the high 
down to the low, uh, could we see a bounce back to 4,400? Yeah, sure. 4,450. It's possible. And as we look at today, technology, communications, and cyclicals being higher, mostly technology, um, this is certainly encouraging. The best performing stock on the session was NVIDIA and the S&P 100. Google's right in there. Uh, you look at Meta, Adobe, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple up over 1% today. Um, so it certainly looks like, yes, yeah, and even bullish option activity on, thir- on, fr- on Friday. We're seeing a little bit of a rally in Costco today. So it's possible that we could see cyclicals. We could see staples catch a little bit of a bid and lead the way generally with the market. And it may cause it to rally again towards 40, 433, 436, or even 440 on the SPY. Those are very real possibilities. But the problem is that doesn't exactly clear the air. Our prior high was here. We trade all the way down. There's our low. That's basically making back 61% of the last downswing. And then you'd probably expect the market to roll over again. Now, as we get through October, we start to approach the end of the year. Seasonally, that's a pretty good period of time. However, we have seen some sell-offs late October into November and in December. So we could see the market just limp into the end of the year uh, right now. Uh, But as of right now, we're looking for maybe the possibility we could see a little short-term reprieve and a little bit of a bounce. Maybe only carry to the high of 432 from last Friday and roll over again. But just so you know, looking at the skew, the risk is still to the downside. So don't get too over your skis in terms of rushing to get bullish. Again, what's next? Again, reasonable to see a rally but just keeping that bigger picture of a very likely possibility we see another downturn and likely take out our low from 927 on the SPY 422.29. We could readily see the market pull into those areas. One of the areas that's starting to weaken is is oil futures. Uh, We saw some bearish activity talked about on Friday in my session on on Theotrade, uh, bearish activity in XLE uh, was a October 10, sorry, got looking at the wrong one here. So that's CL. If we look at XLE, it was in October 102. So again, we're looking kind of in the money, but again, we're seeing today down about 2%. This has got to, this will help the market, right? If we can see energy start to come in, and this is representative energy stocks, but if we see energy oil itself continue to sell off, this could be the catalyst for causing the market to rise. The only problem is when you look at the term structure of oil futures, what you still see is a very steep backwardation. In fact, we're steeper today than we were on the 21st of September or going back to the 27th of September, right? So we're still looking at a very steep backwardation still in the oil market. Actually, we're not quite as steep as we were on the on the uh, 27th. But point being is this is still a pretty steep backwardation, meaning what? The risk is to the upside still in oil, but we could catch a near-term reprieve in oil prices that could help lift the market in the near term. But as we start to push towards October, as the weather starts to get cooler, which for a decent part of the United States may occur earlier than expected, earlier than is normal, we might see more demand for oil and refined products start to increase. And again, that may cause oil prices to rebound. And so that's what I'm kind of looking for right here. So I talked about bearish opportunities in my session on Friday and energy. But this might very well kind of settle out quickly, and then we reset back to the upside in energy and oil specifically. And so right now, we're looking for that opportunity. And again, this may help create some near-term lift. Now, what may help uh, if oil prices start to come in, it could help treasury yields. Obviously, major selling today. Uh, Yields are up uh, 1.1 on the uh, TNX. So again, we're talking about uh, from basically 4.5 to 4.6. So again, about you know 11 basis points. That's a decent size move for one day. This is well over 10-year highs. We'd have to go back a really long time before the last time we saw yields at this level. And again, it's crazy, you know, thinking that the Fed is likely on hold. We have to go back to late 2007. The Fed is likely on hold, and yet yields keep rising. And why does it keep rising? In fact, look at TYX. TYX of almost 4.8 percent. FVX five-year. Is at about 4.717, and TNX right now is pushing towards the five-year and may push above it. 
So what's happening right now is that IRX 13 week T-bills remains at around where the Fed's target range is, five and a quarter to five and a half percent. But we're quickly seeing the five year, the 10 year, the 30 year all running up, pushing back up towards where the Fed funds is right currently, which is where approximately the 13 week T-bills. Why? What's causing this? And if we look at oil prices as kind of a, a representation, as we look at CPI, PPI, PCE data, the reality is, is that uh, is that inflation expectations are likely rising for the long term, which is very problematic for the Fed. So as we look at 10-year Treasury yields again selling off today in a new month, it's a big, it's a big selling today. What happened in utilities cannot be understated. Being down over 5% at one point today. Again, the biggest stock in the space is Nextera, down over 10%. Yields are rising. Prices are falling as yields on the 10-year treasury and other corresponding treasuries are rising as well. We're seeing massive selling, and that spilled over also to real estate today. Um, a stock that I've been bearish on for a while is AGNC. I pulled it off the table last week as we are kind of testing our, our lows down here. Um, and again, it's rolled back over today, broke support at about 935. This may have a chance of rolling back. But here's the thing, right? If we continue to see pressure in oil, bearish pressure, this may help alleviate some of the near-term inflation expectations. This may help, help treasuries find a bid and maybe see a bit of a pullback here. And this is one of the biggest sell-offs we've seen in 60 years. And we could definitely see a retracement in yields maybe back to 4.2%. That's back to prior highs over the course of the last year. That'd be a significant move in treasuries, even a move back to 4.4 or 4.5%. Some buying activity could help lift uh, stock market prices and certainly may help bolster technology. But the number one on this list could be utilities in this case. And so today we saw bullish activity in LQD, is one product sold off hard with the broader sell-off in treasuries. But if we look at on LQD, the November 102s, right here about, uh, oh, sorry, 10,000 contracts traded uh, traded in one print. If we look down option time and sales, bought in one print. And so you get a sense of, again, for, for the second time in the last few days, more interest coming into, the, uh, into LQD and bonds generally. So this oversold, this big sell-off today, down nearly 1%, we might see some buying in the near term. So if we see buying in treasuries, if we see buying in corporate bonds, investment-grade bonds, heavily leveraged companies like utilities have tons of debt. Their dividends are kind of a competitor for treasury yields. As we look at XLU, this could be a natural place to look for some buying. Now, earlier in the session today, Nextera, Saw some bearish activity, right? Puts being bought. Obviously, that's helping providing the catalyst here. This is out in March. 5,000 contracts on the 45 strike for 15 March. Now, there isn't a lot of gamma come in as a result of this having 165 days remaining, but the bearish activity here does help indicate, look, there's negative flows coming into Nextera, which is a utilities company. Now, if we look at kind of when that occurred throughout the course of the day today, we're going to look at puts. We'll go to the uh, uh, March out here. And you'll notice this occurred, you know, um, the 45 puts, 952.11 earlier in the session, right? Well, not too far after that. I mean, we're, you know, not too far after that period of time, XLU similarly saw, well, not similarly, but to the opposite, saw bullish flows. And as we look at today's time in sales, you'll notice here, 9,999, basically buying 10,000 contracts of the 58, selling 10,000 contracts of the 60 for 20 oct. So here we have a mismatch, right? Expectations of utility stocks going lower into next year, but recognizing that at the same time, there are some bullish expectations here building, buying the 58, selling the 60 for 18 days. So we're looking for a near-term bounce but overall, potentially a bigger sell-off going into early next year. And so this is the setup that they kind of like here. Do you trade the bearish side of it, given how much we've sold off in the near term, or do you flip it more bullish? 
And again, as we look at this 20 oct trade here, buying the 58 at uh, 60 and 60 cents right here and selling the 60 out here, right? And again, you're picking up a spread that's relatively cheap for a short amount of time. Now, given the fact there's 18 days left, we got to see some movement. But if we do catch a bid here under the price of utilities and we can push towards 60, that's the spread right there. A decline in volatility as this moves in the money will actually help you in terms of your profitability. And so I find that kind of interesting. Now, on the flip side, though, I mean, the pricing of these are a little tough, right? The skew as we look at, uh, um, I'll look at implied volatility in here too. Volatility is falling as you move out of the money. So I kind of like the idea of coming out here like a 5860, but doing it for November. And again, the skew is not as favorable, but if we give it a little bit more time to move into this 58 to 60 territory um, and volatility falls, um, is it going to fall as much out here? You know, not quite as much. The vol crush will not be as, it's going to be a little more stable out here compared to October 20th. But it does give you just a little bit more time if you don't like going 18 days out. But again, the vol structure is pretty flattish in here at 58 to 60. And so the pricing's a little bit better, but November gives you a little bit more time. Okay. So there's a little bit of a trade off there between the two. Uh, but again, it, it's interesting in that it does provide the opportunity to benefit from the upside and it volatility comes in as it goes in the money and pushes the 60. Uh, both of those will benefit, although October will benefit more by the spread expanding because there is less time. Okay, so longer term bearish on utilities, short term kind of bullish on utilities and bonds, treasury bonds, uh, corporate investment grade bonds. And, uh, you know, HYG as well. We might see a little bit of a bounce here. I kind of took this trade on Friday, took a trade on Thursday, thinking we'd catch a bounce. We sold off hard. And again, part of the problem that we're seeing in here is the fact that interest rate expectations are changing materially. And, and not necessarily for, for the current, you know, the next meeting announcement. We're back to where we were a month ago. But it's really how it's changing as we get out towards March. Um, March, for example, we're not expecting a rate cut anymore. Right. Look at this transition here. Thirty four percent, almost 40 percent probability of a rate cut by March. Now we're saying only a seven percent probability as we look to uh, May. OK, we look here and again, we look at a rate cut possibilities here. Twenty four percent. Add these two together. That doesn't bode well. Right now, maybe we go to five and a half percent before we go to five and a quarter percent. So maybe there's a quarter point being priced in there. Uh, but again, look, we're looking at thirty eight percent. We're looking at about close over a 45% probably we raise rates by the end of the year, but it's not until what? Let's look at June. When do we start to see pricing greater than 50% probability of a rate cut? July. Look out here, five. Now we're starting, we got, we got to get to July before we're starting to price in the first rate increase. That's middle of next year. That's the difference from March, May timeframe where we were just a few weeks ago to now pushing out the middle of the year. And what's happening? We're seeing inflation expectations changing materially. And again, this is reshaping what's happening to bonds. And as we look at TNX and TYX, these longer dated uh, treasuries, why these are rising, why we're seeing a bull flattening as long-term rates are rising faster than short-term rates is again, we're rethinking our inflation expectations. And that's a big deal. And that's something that the Fed itself is gonna have a hard time taming and may have to tame the future with more rate increases, which is kind of what they articulated in their last meeting as a possibility here. Um, as we look at other stocks out there today, Schwab, well, normally you'd expect that, uh, you know, uh, um, investment companies, brokers, et cetera, would benefit by a steepening of the yield curve, which a bull steepening mean long-term rates are pushing towards short-term rates and rising above. Well, Schwab today is down 2.5%. This is on the heels of some trade on Friday. So I, I bought a 52.50.50 on Friday spread. Looking at this pushing lower in the next couple of weeks, that was for November. But more activity in Schwab. This is out there. That activity on Friday was for January. This is out here in April, 4,300 contracts at the 45 strike. But again, this is representative, not of real gamma squeeze potential, but of money flow on the bearish end here. So bearish financials, bullish on treasuries, Looking for that oversold bid to come in. 
Uh, Because, boy, if it doesn't, what's going to happen with the rest of the market? That's going to really cause problems. In order for the market to really catch a bit here and start to start to bounce off support, it's going to need some help from interest rates. But again, right now, the bigger picture, Schwab are probably looking at rolling lower, retesting lows at 47. And on the flip side, we look at Ally. And this is amongst a number of bullish trades uh, in, uh, in Square, in PayPal. It was down nearly 4% today. We're back at support, if not breaking support. Volume is about average or a little bit below average. But someone's taking a shot today for October, looking at uh, buying, they're buying the 27 and selling the 29, looking for a near-term bounce in Ally. So again, if yields can come in a little bit, and if the outlook you know, for inflation just temper just a little bit, this may create that bullish bounce opportunity in the SPY that may carry it higher in the near term. And yes, it's possible technology and communications cyclicals could lead the way. But given the oversold nature of utilities, this may provide an opportunity for utilities really to start to lead the way in the S&P. And again, that may be a long shot, but it may be worth a shot that's where it's worth taking given the risk and reward and possibilities if yields start to come in and the benefit it could create for utilities and secondarily real estate and then tertiarily uh, technology and cyclicals. Well, folks, that's all we got for today. We'll catch you back uh, next week on the Monday video. Have a great one. Thank you.